So, PP. It kinda sucks. Most people agree that maybe it isn't the best objective measure of impressiveness. But that doesn't mean that it can't be interesting to look at not only how players have pushed the system to its limits, but also how maps in the PP system have been stretched so thin. This is why, despite the general consensus on how, well, awful it is, people still pay attention to the PP record. Because it's kind of fun. So, what happened between this and this? And why is it this way? This is the history of the PP record. So we're going to start off with the implementation of PPV1 in July of 2012. This is different from the current system in nearly every way, but the standouts are definitely map contention based PP and plays decaying over time. These are both features that use things other than raw skill requirements to determine the impressiveness of a play, with time and leaderboard spots both playing a large role in how much PP you would gain from a play. This would mean that the formula for high PP plays early on was to have an impressive play on a map that had tons of plays. This is why Kakizi would begin by taking the record with a 425 PP play on Warren Height, which is quite the play, being number one on the map's DT leaderboards for over a year. Kakizi would then essentially assert his dominance, taking the record from himself twice. First with a Killer Song DT worth 457 PP, and then a remote control 540 PP play the next day. This set him over 100 PP ahead of the next record, and made him basically the undisputed king of the record. But we all know how this story ends. In November 2013, because of eye troubles and discontent with the staff, he would cheat and get himself banned, resulting in Aruji taking the PP record with a 419 PP play, less than Kakizi's record from the implementation of the system. This isn't to say that Aruji wasn't nearly just as exceptional though, since he was considered to probably be the most skilled player in Kakizi's absence, and yet he was number 16 when the ban happened. What he would do over the next month would start a pattern which would permeate all throughout this list. Which is that for him, getting higher PP plays wasn't necessarily about skill, but much more about putting in the effort to play the system. But that is what Uruchi would manage to do, dominating the record through a Killer Song hidden double time FC worth 440 PP, and then a remote control FC worth 531 PP, which is only 9 PP under Kakizi's highest play at the time. This would hold his spot as by far the highest PP play in the game, until on January 27th, PPV2 was implemented. But even after this, its lead was so big that it stayed at number 1. And there would be a large period of time where it was clear that Urushi wasn't going to improve on the score, despite playing at the peak of his game, mostly just because of how the system worked. This also came along with the other best player at the time, Sayonara Bai, not being able to take the record, despite many attempts. And especially after he left for military service in Korea, it seemed sort of hopeless. This would leave the question of how long it would be before someone could take this record. And oh boy was there an answer. It was HVIC225. He had started the year as a very good player, but grew into an exceptional one by the end of it. And especially around summer of 2014, he went on a rampage, setting scores like Shotgun Senorita and Hoshizora no Ima, which flexed exceptional aim, finger control, and speed, which all made for a monster DT player. This meant that it wasn't too much of a surprise when he would take the PP record from Maruchi in August of 2014, with another remote control score, which you're probably getting quite tired of seeing by now. But I can assure you that it wasn't anywhere near as bad as what would come next. Because after 5 months of stagnation with HVIC not trying for the record, Covster would come along with the second most anticlimactic PP record in history, with a touchscreen TAG4 score, which basically broke the PP system in every way, which also caused it to be the shortest lived PP record, since it only lasted for a little over a day. This would return HVIC's remote control play to the PP record. And even after the high AR rebalance that would take place on February 12th of 2015, which nerfed the score significantly, he would still keep the record. And he would even retake it from himself twice, first with Ain Friends and then with 7-7, during a massive pop-off during March 2015. This would make it clear that he was basically the king of the record- oh wait, Index has it now. Yep, in less than two weeks after HVIC popped off, Index would go from barely being in the top 10 to being number 3 and taking the PP record becoming the first person to do so without DT, through his one slider break on Last Journey Home, which showed off incredible consistency as well as flow aim for the first 600 PP play in Osu history. Well, until the map was disqualified. This was a disaster in every sense of the word, and it would start a period of relative uncertainty for the record. This is because this wouldn't be the only time that 600 PP was snapped out of existence since Wobbleful would follow this up with a DT Hard Rock FC on Sakura Getsu, 
worth 603 PP, which would only last for 2 days before being nerfed to only a bit over 500 PP by the CS nerf, bringing it full circle to HVIC score on 7-7 being the PP record. But Index would once again show off his impressive consistency by setting another 600 PP score on the now re-qualified Last Journey Home, which would be ranked a few days later for the official first ever 600 PP score. Shortly after this though, Zilver would get some absurd act on Ice Angel for 614 PP, and around this time there would also be someone new to explode into relevance. Raphis. He'd improved at an inhuman rate throughout the year, and he'd made waves as someone who might actually be able to compete with HVIX continued reign on the leaderboards. But before he could do that, HVIC would take the PP record back with a 665 PP play, which would smash the previous record and make it clear that he was far ahead of everyone else. Well, until he wasn't. Since this would be followed with Raphis popping off, going from nearly 1000 PP behind HVIC to within a few hundred during the month of September, partially because of his use of 3mod. There had been cases in the past where 3mod was farmed, but never to this extent, since often AR11 would make it too unreasonable to try and use for PP. The thing was that Raphis was at the absolute peak of high AR reading, probably because of how much of a prodigy he was. This is why when he took the PP record with a 3 mod score on best friends, it was extremely impressive, but also it made sense. He only took the PP record by 1 PP though, with the first ever 666 PP score on Osu. At this time, HVIC still held number 1 by a fair bit, and had been playing pretty frequently, so it seemed entirely likely that he would take the PP record back. And he would even get close many times, but never take it. And more surprising than this is who would actually take it, since after a long period of barely playing the game, Wobblefolf would come back and take it cleanly with a Defender's Hard Rock FC, which would once again beat the old PP record by 1 PP, making the record 667 PP. This meant that it was slowly but surely trudging forward. But this would be the last PP record before everything would change with the biggest event in Ozu history. In the lead up to this event, he's even playing offline and streaming, drawing thousands of viewers and showing off skills that made him one of, if not the best player in the game. And during this time, he'd also found a couple of maps that he clearly wanted to set a good score on. One of which was Blue Zenith. This wasn't all too surprising, since the map seemed right up his alley. But what was surprising was how he wanted to play it, since he didn't want to just play it no mod. No, despite the map having no FCs when he was playing it, he decided to use Hard Rock. To almost any other player, this would have been a pass attempt, or maybe a goal for a few years down the line. And even when he himself tried it, he'd often struggle to pass at the end because of the absurd spacing. This is why he would end up spending a few weeks unsuccessfully playing with Hard Rock, and end up settling for a Nomad FC for a very short time. He would never give up on a Hard Rock FC though, and as time went on it kept seeming more and more possible, with his play on the 29th of December 2016 having only 3 misses in it, which is already insane in its own right. This wasn't the end though, since only 2 days later, on the 1st of January 2017, he would be the first one to see it. Kakizi would be the first person to achieve a 700 PP play, only 2 months after his unban, with a score that was so far ahead of what anyone else had been able to pull off prior. This raises the question of whether anyone would be able to take it, which seemed to be answered by a resounding, not really. This is because, despite Raphis and HVIC playing a fair bit, no one was even able to get a 700 PP play for months after Blue Zenith had been FC'd. But that did start to change when one map was ranked. Dream Solister. This map isn't that interesting in itself, but how it gave two separate players the ability to set 700 PP made it a bit more so. I say this because the map was at a comfortable BPM for most players and it used almost exclusively comfortable jumps and bursts, with even the mapper saying in the description that the map was for PP. This isn't entirely unique, most of the maps were like this to some extent, but this was sort of a different level, and maps would most certainly keep going down this path. Over the next months though, neither Raphis nor HVIC would be able to touch Kakizi's record, with HVIC even basically quitting the middle. But there was one player determined to change this. 
Angel Sim. He'd enter the top 10 in early 2015, but only managed to crack the top 5 in mid-2016 with a myriad of crazy plays. This is why, when he set a 730pp play and took the PP record from Kakizi after nearly a year, it was quite exciting. The map that this was done on is something though, since, well, it's really obviously only designed for PP. This isn't to discredit the player or anything, it's just clear that this was the point of the map, even more so than Dream Solister. And it seemed like with this and Dream Solister, comfortable DT maps were clearly going to be the new meta, since there were so many of them and they were quite easy to farm. But well, that wasn't what happened at all, because there was still, you know, that other guy. Who could have seen it coming? Kakizi set the first 800pp score, beating the previous record by 70pp, with the most legendary score in Osu history, redefining what was considered impressive, and also making this list boring for like the next year. Like where do you even go from Freedom Dive hidden hard rock? Well, after nearly 6 months, Kakizi himself would beat it with a remote control score, and so would Vaxa only a few days later. These are both really impressive, but well, they aren't Freedom Dive hidden hard rock. But luckily, there would be one score to not only surpass Freedom Dive in terms of PP, but also skill and impressiveness, when Freedom Diver set his legendary High Tide 3 mod 900. <laughs> Another disaster had been caused by touchscreen, which would finally result in the playstyle being nerfed, although it wasn't ideal. The change was definitely needed, but it also killed touchscreen's viability in the system, which is definitely a little bit of an overreaction. This would also mark 2017 as the year with the least PP records, with, well, one. But luckily, 2018 would be different, because of one big meta shift, since it was time for Hard Rock to shine. Though, the year would start off on a bit of a different note. Since only 21 days into the year, Rathis would pop off, going on a rampage of impressive scores, all crescendoing into an exceptionally impressive score with a Necrofantasia 830pp play. It was crazy to see the record finally progressing again, and that, along with Rathis coming up and taking the number one spot from Kakizi, made this absurdly hype. Which couldn't be said as much for the next record. Because FG Sky's 4 mod on Shiori became the PP record the next month, on the 15th of February. I like this score. I think it's really fascinating. But it's also an extremely short map and completely RNG and memorization based. This is why most people were happy when the hidden rebalance in April would remove this from the PP record. But this change also did something interesting, in that it would make Kakizi's Freedom Dive the PP record and also bring him back to number one. At this point, it's just mean. Kakizi could have set that play and then never touched Osu again, and he would have held the PP record for two years. But as I mentioned earlier, the record wouldn't stagnate for long. This is because of two main things. First, the hidden rebalance made DT less viable. And second, Hard Rock began to get many more egregious farm maps. This would usher in a new era of farm maps. Well, after FG Sky took the PP record again on Shiori 4 mod. But after that, on June 24, the Abyssal would show off how much untapped potential it was behind most Hard Rock players, when he would set the first Hard Rock FC on the qualified map Honesty, which would have been the PP record if it was ranked. This would obviously not get to stay, but right after the map was ranked, Idki would be able to take the PP record on it. The map was essentially sidetracked day, but it gave 800 PP. And so, over the next weeks, the old PP record would technically be broken a couple of times over, and it was essentially the most broken map ever. And it, along with FG Sky taking the record for his first time, confirmed, I think marks the point Don't when the PP progression was much more dependent on the maps being made rather than the skill progression of players over the years. This would show especially through Honesty's reign over the record, and especially the first 900 PP play. Don't get me wrong, this play is really impressive, and Carthy was almost certainly the only one who had the skilled FC with Hidden Hard Rock, and especially the only one who was willing to go through the headache that was doing that. Especially since, even without Hard Rock, the map had only been FC'd twice with Hidden. 
But the map was still kind of busted, and it beat Carthy's old highest PB play by like 100. But I did say that this year would be the year of hard rock, not just honesty. Because there would be one player who'd go above and beyond and define oh the year this way. No. Idki. This would first become abundantly clear when he set Uta hard rock, a score so absurd, which until only a few weeks ago, no player had gotten anywhere near, and he essentially dominated consistency and flow aim in 2018. This is why when Sotarx's Cry Thunder was qualified as the 1000 PP project, he was set up as the clear frontrunner on the map. And well, he delivered. These plays reached exceptionally close to the biggest milestone the game had ever seen, something which had basically been a pipe dream since the inception of the system. A 1000 PP play. There were very few maps capable of giving this out at the time, but it seemed like player skill was getting very close to being able to pull it off. Well, until the next PP change in February 2019, which had nerfed flow aim farming in a way that seemed reasonable at the time, but maybe not in hindsight. This is because this would usher in a complete switch on what was farmed, and start the era that I like to call the 3 mod fiery 1-2 jump spam era. As the name suggests, this wasn't my or most people's favorite, since only 5 days after this change, Fiery would take the record on his own map of Guess Who's Back. He basically cracked the formula, making the easiest maps ever with repeated vertical jumps which boiled down to throwing your hand across your tablet. It was essentially taking the progression of PP maps to its logical conclusion. This is why most people didn't find them very appealing, but they were sort of unavoidable. This record would also stand for 4 months as a testament to the broken state of the PP system. And it probably would have stood for an annoying amount of time. If not, for Vaxay's comeback. Vaxay had originally been known for being exceptionally young and having stupid fast improvement, but he'd grown into much more and even gotten close to Kukizzi's remote control play only days after he'd gotten it. This is why, going forward, it looked like he had the opportunity to become something else. But he'd begun playing the game less around late 2018. This is why when he came back in June of 2019, there weren't too many expectations, but it did generate a bit of hype. Hype which he'd go so far beyond. Endgame Hidden Devil Time. Atsuki Zukiyo, Hidden Devil Time. Sun Glow, Hidden Devil Time. And Cycle Hit DT, just to name a few of the scores. Which is why I once again regret to inform you that he would take the PP record for the first time in his Osu career on Fiery's Lonely Go for 972 PP. It sucked that it had to be this way. But once again, 1000 PP was approaching, and it seemed obvious how it was going to happen. Vaxxay would play Lonely Go, or basically any other Fiery map with 3 mod, until it happened. This would have been pretty anticlimactic, having the biggest milestone ever broken on a Fiery map of all things. Which is probably why Vaxxay set his sights on something else entirely. Tsukinami DT. This was quite the task, since the map had multiple extremely high walls to overcome. But since Vax already had an impeccable aim, incredible consistency, and great speed, he'd already come most of them. But there was still one looming over the horizon. Stamina. Because he'd recently just come back from a break, and so he didn't have 100% of his stamina back yet. And that along with the extended 270 jumps at the end, and especially the bursts after those jumps, made it hard to imagine that anyone could get the play. This is why the real challenge was trying not to choke near the end when the map goes sicko mode for a whole minute, and oh boy did that stop him a lot of times. But he stuck with it, not taking the easy way out. And eventually, it happened. I remember seeing this play and being shocked by the aim and the impressiveness of it not being a fiery map, but what's really been proven to stay on the test of time was the accuracy. It's been over a year and a half since the score, and Whitecap, Emrek, and Ryuke have all had good runs on the map, but only one player has been able to get above 99% on the map. Vaxe got 99.5. Like what? It was awesome to see 1000 PP actually be a sick play. 
but it would last for less than a day. Since Idki would snipe it with a 1035 PP play on Song's comp, with streams that had follow points. This record would stand for a few weeks, but Vaxi would end up taking it back again a few weeks later, which is where the record would stand until the final arc. Okay, summary. Man unbanned after years of playing on private servers and being rumored to be a hacker because of an unfortunately timed ban. He'd once been hated by a lot of people, but over time it had faded, and so his unban was met with a bit of hype. Hype which couldn't have possibly lived up to what would actually happen. Yeah, White Cat would do a lot of impressive plays, and build a reputation for being quite good at farming, and so it seemed that it would only be a matter of time before he'd set the record. And that, he did, with an extremely impressive play on Magma 3 mod. But there was one other guy we've mentioned before that would come a bit too close to the record for comfort. FG Sky wouldn't stop there though, and while White Cat would be able to take the number one spot and create the largest PP gap in history, getting many 1.1k PP plays which were unheard of before, FG Sky would take the PP record over and over and over, getting so far ahead that it seemed impossible to compete. This is a true fallout of the fiery 1-2 jump spam era and over a year of no PP changes, and it seemed like it would probably stay like this for years if nothing changed. But my god. Did 2020 have an insane power creep? I mean, Emrek and Murami both popping up and White Cat being White Cat, FG Sky would actually have some competition, especially from one play. And that was Murami's Moe Cut. He would choke 1.4k PP, and the best play, well, ever. And it seemed like he just missed a PP record. We'll get back to this play. But for the time being, Badu would get a C-type 1k P- Oh, 1.1k- Oh, 1.2k PP play, and set the PP record in one day. This was already reaching close to 1.3k PP, only a year after the first 1k, and it was pretty obvious that something needed to change. This is basically where we stand now, right after a PP change, which has made Moe Kai the PP record, where most people agree that it should be. 